At this point, you know that if you're given some arbitrary binary number, you can convert it to decimal using powers of two. So the positions in this number are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, it can be helpful to write out the relevant powers of 2 in advance, and that can be done very quickly. Um, let's put exponents for 2 to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we won't need more for this problem, but you could easily continue on. And keeping in mind that 2 to the 0 is 1, we simply double to get the rest of the values, the rest of the powers of 2. Now, the more you do these types of conversions, the more likely you are to memorize many of these numbers. So we can take this number and write out that it is equal to 1 times 2 to the 7, because that is the digit in that position, plus 0 times 2 to the 6, plus 1 times 2 to the 5th, plus 1 times 2 to the 4th, plus 0 times 2 to the 3rd, plus 1 times 2 to the 2nd, plus 0 times 2 to the 1, plus 1 times 2 to the 0. Now, it's already obviously very tedious to write out all of these terms that have a 0 in them, and it's clearly unnecessary to write out these terms that have a 1 in them. So as you get used to these sorts of conversions, you'll probably just skip straight to the next step, which is reducing this to 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 5th plus 2 to the 4th plus 2 squared plus 2 to the 0. And now we can use the powers of 2 we calculated previously and plug them in to get 128 plus 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1. Now you could resort to a calculator at this point, though it is often easy to pair numbers together that are powers of 2 and add them up quickly. For example, here the 2 and the 8 combine to get 10, and so we get 160. Here the 16 and the 4 combine to give us 20. Then we have a 1, so we get 181 as the decimal equivalent of this binary number. Now sometimes we will distinguish binary from decimal numbers by putting the base in the lower right hand corner of the number. And so I know this is a binary number because there's a little 2 here. Otherwise I might mistakenly uh, interpret it as just a very big decimal number that happened to only use ones and zeros. Likewise, I can put a little 10 in the lower right of 181 to indicate that this is a base 10 number. So this is information that you should have remembered from the previous module, but what if you want to convert from the decimal number 181 to binary. Now, in this case, we already know what it'll convert to, so we can use it as a way of checking our work. But let's assume that we don't know and go through the process of how we would convert. So converting from binary to decimal involves multiplying by powers of 2, whereas converting from decimal to binary involves dividing by 2 repeatedly. So we will start 
with 2 divided by 181. Now we can calculate this out. 2 times 9 is 18. 0 left over with the 1 that comes down. How many times can 2 fit into 1? Well, it fits into it 0 times. So 2 times 0, 0. And we subtract. And we get a 1. So we have a remainder of 1. Now, these remainders will be very important. We're going to accumulate several remainders throughout a series of division operations. And at the end, we're going to use them to reconstruct the binary number. So this is the first step. We continue the process by taking the answer to the previous division and then dividing that by 2. So we ask, what about 2 into 90? And we can repeat the process. We get 4. 2 times 4 is 8. We get 1. 0, we get 10. How many times does 2 fit into 10? 5. 2 times 5 is 10. When we subtract, we get 0. Therefore, we have a remainder of 0 in this case. So because we are dividing by 2, every remainder will either be 1 or 0. In other words, every remainder will be a binary digit. Hopefully you're starting to see how these might be useful to us later. But let's just continue the process. 2 divided by 45. Remember, we take the previous answer and put it here. So here we have 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract that, we get 0. Bring down the 5. 2 can fit into 5 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4 again. Here we have a remainder of 1. Then we will do 2 divided by 22. And that's clearly 11 with a remainder of 0. And then we take this answer and put it here. So 2 into 11. 2 can fit into 11 five times. 2 times 5 is 10. We subtract them, we have 1, so we have a remainder of 1. And we have to continue this process. We'll carry this all the way over here. 2 into 5. Continue this process until our answer is 0. So we're not quite there yet. We have a remainder of 1 here. Take the answer 2, put it there. We say 2 divided into 2. That fits once. 1 times 2 is 2. We get 0, remainder 0. And then we have 2 into 1. And 2 fits into 1 0 times. 0 times 2 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1, so we have a remainder of 1. So this is the stopping point. Once we have a 0 here, we stop the division process, and now we reconstruct our binary digit using the remainders. So the first result we got corresponds to 2 to the 0. And then the next result corresponds to 2 to the 1, and then 2 to the 2, and so on. 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7. So by taking this sequence of remainders, and then reversing the order, we will get this original binary number back. So see how that's a 1 and that's a 1? So we get a 1 in the 0th position. And then we have a 0 and a 0. So that's the 1 position has a 0. And then a 1 and a 1. And so we have a one in the twos position, then a zero in a zero. 
So we have a zero in the threes position, a one and a one. So we have a one in the fours position, and then a one and a one here. So that's a one in the fives position, a zero and a zero, it's a zero in the six position, and then finally a one and a one. That's a one in the seven position. And these results are the same. One, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one.